Namaste and welcome to another yoga flow class. Today we're going to use a tennis ball or if you have the two tennis balls in a sock, an athletic sock with a knot and you have them pretty firmly together, a yoga strap and a block. So let's come together standing at the fronts of our mats, taking palms together and take an exhale and on an inhale reach up stretch up and as you exhale come right down the center of your body and let's do that again taking that inhale feeling the feet as you reach up exhale and one more time like that Feel the arms, the shoulders, and as you exhale, stay nice and tall. And now let's add sound to that. Take an inhale. And again, inhale. time, lengthening that exhale. A moment of gratitude, a moment of coming onto this mat and feeling that sense of it's time for my practice. So let's release our arms and let's make a, a mudra here Thumb tips touch, index tips touch, palms to your belly, and your thumbs are right in your navel center. So see if you can kind of relax those elbows slightly back and down, and soften your knees just a little bit as we inhale and breathe right into that belly and chest. And as you exhale, relax the chest and the belly. Once again, inhale, opening, and exhale. Right here, continue. This is where prana lives. Right here at the lower belly. Asking prana to come home right now to help recharge us. And release. And then on another inhale, reach the arms up. And as you exhale, turn the palms out and reach out. And once again, inhale, palms up. Exhale, turning. Now we're going to add some torso turning. So take an inhale. And as you exhale, turn to the right and reach the palms out and down. Stay there. Inhale again. Lift up, turn all the way to the other side. Exhale, inhale, lift up, turning back to center and back to heart. And let's go ahead and look for, for that double ball or a single ball. The double ball just doesn't move as much. You could even have one ball onto, uh, into a sock. And I'm going to choose either one of the balls, or if you have a larger foot, you can be on both of the balls. And go ahead and start to press and release around the bottom of the foot. So when we're working on the posterior chain, the back of the body that starts at the bottom of the foot and goes all the way up the back to your eyebrows, a good place to begin is at the feet to help the back of the body feel more lengthened and more open. And then see if you can find a spot. I've just found one that feels just a little tight, perhaps a little tender. And notice how I'm staying there and I'm pressing in and releasing and pressing in and releasing. And then go to one more spot. I've got one right here, right in front of the heel. And I'm just working into that spot. Remember, no sharp pain. Certainly a dull, maybe even a slight achiness, and you might feel it up the back of the body. And then come away from there and take a moment 
just to notice. Just notice both sides. So really when we're talking about yoga and this union of mind, body, and spirit, we're really talking about awareness and becoming more aware of the body, more aware of the mind and all the chatter going on in there and using some of these practices to really calm and quiet. So here I am on the other side and I'm finding a totally different story here, a different pattern in my body. And now I'm gonna go to one of those places that feels tight and it's right under that kind of mound of the big toe, the widest part of the foot there. And go ahead and reach into it and away. Some people like to just stay in it and you can stay just like this, breathing. And then find one more spot. For me, it's about the center of the foot here. And I like to move my whole body into it and away, keeping my stability. You can see how I've widened my feet so that I feel pretty confident doing this. And then go ahead and maybe stay in it for a moment and step away. And let's go ahead and put those balls to the side and once again, find your stand, your standing mountain pose, and take palms to face forward. And take a moment, just breathe in here. And then we'll take our palms together and take an exhale. And on an inhale, reach up. Now this time as you exhale, forward fold. Knees are very bent, and as you inhale, Come part way up and stretch. And then exhale, drop down again, knees bent. Let your head hang. Inhale, come back up again and try to hold here, breathing. Now you can take your block like I'm demonstrating. I have it on the high end and I'm gonna show you from the side. So I'm keeping this bit of a lumbar curve. You might have to keep your knees bent as much as you need. And then I'm reaching my chest forward, pressing down through heels. If that feels pretty good and you want to go deeper, go to the next level of that block. Some people can go deeper. And yet some people can go even deeper, dropping in, using your breath. Then bend those knees deeply and come all the way back up and reach up and stretch up and back to heart. And just take a moment to feel that. Just take a moment to feel what just occurred at the back of the body. We're gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna stay in the side position. Take an inhale and reach up. And as you exhale, forward fold. Now, inhale, come part way up, stretch. And then exhale, drop in. And hold there and breathe. And once again, do you need the block? Find the block as we come part way up again. I'm reaching my sit bones back, reaching my chest forward, keeping my neck pretty neutral. And then maybe taking little tiny bits of straightening the knees. Are you crunching your toes? Relax your toes. Find the full foot bottom. Use your breath. And then drop in deep, let your head go, hold opposite elbows, and go ahead and just sway side to side. Let your head go even more. Notice the full foot bottom here. We're trying to stay really stable in both feet. Let your head go totally. Now pull in through the deep belly, and on an inhale, come all the way up, stretch up and hands to heart. And take a moment here just to feel the differences from when we first began. Palms together. And take an inhale and reach. And as you exhale forward, fold, dropping in. Inhale, part way up again. Use the block if you need. And now as you exhale, drop in deep. Let your head go, widen your feet, quite wide, drop in even deeper if you have that block and want it in front of you like I'm demonstrating. Go ahead, breath here. 
Try to find the outer edges of your feet with a little more intensity. And then take your hands behind you and come to a seated position. Feet bottoms together, away from the body. Hands maybe at the knees, or if you can get your ankles without rounding, okay? So take a moment here, nice deep breaths. So as I'm breathing, I'm lifting up through the chest. As I'm exhaling, I'm trying to soften the knees just a little bit. Then take your fingers behind, and I like to make like a claw and even turn them backwards. Shoulders roll back, push through those fingertips, really activates the nervous system. Open the chest, lift up through the torso. A couple more breaths here. Can you soften your knees down while keeping that lengthening of the spine? And release. And let's bring our knees upright, feet bottoms flat, feet away from your hips, hands to your knees. As you exhale, round back. And as you inhale, reach forward and up. And again, exhale, round your back. Inhale, reach that chest, then the throat. Exhale back. One more time like this, reaching up. Now, come back and stay back. Chin is tucked. Go ahead and really work into those elbows if there's no pain where I'm really trying to stretch them straight. Chin is tucked. Start to maneuver the deep belly muscles in deeper towards the spine, keeping that breath. Now, on the next inhale, belly, chest, arms. Exhale, round. Again, inhale, belly, chest, arms. Exhale round. Get that sequence right. Two more times. When we sequence the body correctly, things work better. Last time, reaching, opening, and coming all the way back. Once again, chin is tucked. And then come back upright. Feet come wider apart, maybe as wide as the mat, maybe even more. Hands back, chest lifted windshield wipers. I love these because they're so such a nice way to talk to the hips, to talk to those ball and socket joints, the hip joints. And just a couple more times, not pushing into pain. And then come back up. We're going to find our straps in case we need them. I'm going to turn to the side again. We're going to go ahead and hold on to knees and bring yourself down to the mat, down to the floor. That feels good. <clears throat> knees are bent, feet are flat, and we're going to go ahead and put the strap around the right foot and lift that leg straight up. So here we use the strap because we want to keep the shoulders really settling down to the mat. Chin is slightly tucked. Try not to push your lumbar spine deeply into the mat. In fact, you want to try to keep a little bit of an arch there. And then start to push that heel up towards the ceiling. Spread your toes. If the knee is bent, let it be bent. Don't overly hurt your low back, because that's a definite relationship, hamstrings and low back. And if you can, bring that leg in a little closer. Take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, bend those elbows, lift the chest, and then the head. Inhale, back down. Again, chest and head. Inhale, back down. See if you can come a little deeper. Again. And coming back down, hold the strap just in your right hand. Your other hand could be on your left hip tip 
or out to the side and start to open this leg out. Now as you're opening this leg out, stay firmly straight on the back of the pelvis, okay, the, the sacrum. Don't let yourself tip to the right. Only that leg is tipped out. You could also drop the left leg straight down. Use your exhale to go in a little deeper into the deep belly muscles. If you notice me, I'm even bending my elbow and putting it on the floor to find stability and then reach that heel away from you. Turn your head opposite. When we open into the legs like this, we can release into the spine and then come back up. Now we're gonna do one more move on this side. We're gonna bend that knee in deeply and a little more to the outer side of the right chest. So you can stay like this using your strap as I'm showing, foot bottom is straight to the ceiling, or if you have more flexibility, you can take your right hand around the outer edge of that foot and use your nice deep breaths to bring that knee in deeper towards the side of the chest, keeping that foot bottom right up straight towards the ceiling, left hip is down, and then release that leg and drop both legs down and just kind of move knees and ankles and shoulders. And then let's go to the other side. So I'm gonna stay facing in this position so you can see what happens to my right hip as I go into the left foot. So get that strap up there. Work with the strap downwards, okay? So that your elbows are deeply bent and your shoulders are firmly down. Start to reach that left heel up to the ceiling. Spread your toes. Nice deep breaths here. So remember, knee can be bent. Try to keep a bit of a lumbar curve. Then, on the exhale, lift your chest and then your head. Inhale down. Exhale, chest and head. Inhale down. Last time. Try to get that sequence right. As we come back down, hold the strap just in your left hand. Start to open this leg, take the journey open. We're opening into the inner thigh muscles as well. <clears throat> right hand can be on your right hip tip like I'm demonstrating, or it can be out to the side. Now don't let that right hip tip off of the mat like I'm showing. Instead, use your exhale to bring it back. Use your breath as you turn your head opposite that leg. One side might feel tighter. That's so common in our bodies. And then come back up, straight up. You can use both hands like I'm showing or just one as you bend that knee in deeply. <clears throat> it's the knee is more to the side of the chest. The right arm is out if you can. And some of you can get your hand right on that outer edge of the foot. Now hold here breathing. I'm relaxing my face. I'm relaxing my jaw. Can you bring it in a little deeper? And then release straight back up. Release that strap. Start to move legs and hips ankles, shoulders, arms overhead. Really get that nice kind of side stretching going here. All right, from here, we're gonna bring our knees in and we're gonna either hold on to one knee separate from the other or both, you decide, and just start to rock a little. So I'm rocking, keeping my chin tight. Just easy rocking. And then see if you can rock up to sitting. 
Nice deep breaths here. From here, we're going to go into a boat pose. Opening up. Right now, we're working more into inner thighs, belly, low back. Lift that chest. And rest. Let your head just relax down. Take your legs behind you. Bring yourself to all fours. Take two or three cat cows here. Integrating what we've just done through the body. And then curl those toes under, downward facing dog. And walk your dog, bend one knee and the other. Try to stretch right down each heel one at a time. And then come into your full pose here. Nice deep breaths. And we're going to bend those knees and you're going to take your left foot forward to a lunge. Left foot forward to a lunge. I'm on fingertips here. I'm trying to really straighten that back knee. Then turn the back foot, place it flat, and bring yourself up to side angle pose. Keep that left forearm on the left knee and try to make sure that that knee stays forward as you take some nice deep breaths here. Feel free to advance this pose as, as you want. Trying to open that right chest. Then from here, bring yourself to warrior two. Make sure you've got your block handy. I'm gonna take it behind this front foot. Warrior two right there. Then start to straighten that front knee, doing your best. We're gonna glide the torso and start to come into triangle pose. Really think here about keeping the sides of your, your um, torso nice and long equally. And I'm gonna turn in the sideways position so you can see. Now, if you wanna use that block, which can be so helpful, I like to sometimes press my palm into it and really open the chest here. Nice deep breaths. Remember, don't overly crank your neck here. You could even tuck your chin. From here, we're gonna bend that front knee, take your block with you, and put your right hand on your right hip and start to step into that front leg and lift the back leg. Keep looking down, don't open the hip yet. Nice deep breaths. If you have tight hammies, keep that knee slightly bent. Then see if you can open the hip and reach up through the arm. So if the block is up too high, feel free to put it at a lower level or just put your fingers on the mat. From here, look down first, start to bend that knee and drop back and come up to warrior two. Okay, hands on hips. We're gonna turn both feet to face forward. See how wide I am. When I take my arms out, my wrist is equal to my ankles. Okay, you wanna try for that. And then have your block handy in front if you need. Okay, from here, nice, long front of the body, and as you exhale, reach the hips back, reach the torso forward, bend your knees if you need to, start to drop deep, keeping the chest reaching. It's more like my forehead's coming towards the mat, breath here. When you can't go any further, put your hands to that block, or two blocks, or if you can, put your hands flat, to the mat, elbows back, facing back, working to bring your forehead deeper to the mat, breath here. Stay strong through the deep core muscles. 
Some people like to put the top of their head down onto the block or the mat. Then take an inhale coming part way up and on your exhale come all the way up. Whoa. Take you just a moment to feel that. For this next pose, I'm going to take it sideways so you can see it that way. I bring my feet in a little closer because sometimes when we're too wide, we can really hurt ourselves. So we're going to turn the back foot in and turn the front foot out. I'm starting to align myself to this position, but if you notice, my hips are not as equal as I want them to be. I can hurt my sacrum. So I'm going to take this back foot out this way a little bit in order to get my hips to face more front, okay? And you might want your block again right in front of those toes. From here, take an inhale, and as you exhale, come forward to the block, nice deep breaths. So your left hip is gonna wanna be coming more forward. See if you can work it back a little more. This back foot, you can even widen up more or take closer to the other. From here, stay here, which is a wonderful pose for scoliosis, or bring the block down deeper. Or some people come all the way down, tuck the chin, and bring the forehead towards the knee. You can go ahead and round that upper back. You can bend the knee as much as you need to. And then we'll come back out of this pose part way, maybe to the block. And then come all the way to standing. Turning again. Nice deep breaths. Reach those arms up. Inhale. And as you exhale, come back to heart. All right. We're going to go to the other side now. First, we're going to begin with that deep wide leg forward bend again. So go ahead and widen up. For your stability and comfort, make sure you're not dropping into your inner arches. Take the block in front if you want to give that a try. We're going to try to start this with our hands on our hips, trying to keep this nice open chest. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, come part way. Nice deep breaths here. What's holding me here is my deep belly. Start to come deeper. When you can't go any deeper, take the hands away to the block or to the mat. Dropping down deeper and deeper as best as you can. Remember, knees can bend, but keep your feet firmly down. Elbows are facing back. Prasarita Padottanasana. Come partway up a deep inhale. And on the exhale, all the way up. Let's take our block over here in case we need it. And we're going to turn out now the other leg. And go ahead and bring the back foot slightly in. And then start to bend through this front knee. And open to your warrior two. Wonderful pose here. Make sure you stay anchored through the back leg. And then bend that front elbow. Start to come into your side angle pose. Nice deep breaths here. You could also advance it. See, as I take my arm over the side of my head, I'm not dropping my chest. I'm staying open. From here, back to warrior two. We're going to start to straighten that front knee. Now glide just the torso and then find your triangle pose. So it doesn't have to come very deep. I'm trying to keep these sides of my body as straight as possible. Maybe find the block and push into it. If you've got that block, it's going to help you rebound up through the other arm. Nice deep breaths here. And then start to bend that knee. Come back to warrior two. Hands to hips. 
Let's take that back foot in a little bit, start to turn your torso. So if you see me <laughs> falling, if you see me, you'll see that my hips are working to be evenly facing forward. I'm gonna take this block in front in case I need it. And my first move here is gonna to be to come part way. As I'm coming part way down, I might need to bend that front knee if my hammies are tight. Pull your right hip back. Take your hands to a block. And here we're working to reach through the spine. We're working to reach down through that back heel. Then if you want to come deeper, take the block deeper. Or some of you like to come right down with fingertips to the mat. And you can bend that knee to tuck your chin deep up into the chest. And go ahead and bring your forehead towards the knee. The whole body is active here. And we're also working on the endocrine system. Coming back up part way, maybe using the block, and then coming all the way up, turning and stepping back, Tadasana, standing mountain pose. Let's take a moment here to feel the effects of what we've done. Feet are apart a little bit. Take an inhale and reach up. And as you exhale, forward fold with knees bent. Inhale, come part way up. Notice if there's a change. And as you exhale, drop down deep. Knees are bent. Hold opposite elbows and just let yourself hang here. Try to be like a rag doll, just dropping through the spine. Try to release the backs of your shoulders. And then on the next inhale, come part way up again. Widen your feet. And as you exhale, come down to a squat. Remember, you can stay high if you want or come down. Nice open chest here, breath. Then either come all the way back up or if you're able to, come back. Legs out. Release those knees. That feels so good. We're going to end with just two more poses here. So the first one is going to be wide leg, Upavista Konasana. So I like to come and go ahead and pull the skin away from your butt back. And this helps to align the hammies and let them know that it's okay to stretch a bit. You can also bend these knees. So see how I've got them bent to keep you from doing this. Do not do this. In fact, I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. For Upa Vista, if my knees are bent, I can stay forward on my pelvis. But some people, when they start to straighten their knees, they round back. So it's taken me a long time not to. Knees are straight up, toes are spread. This might be as far as we go today, right? Go ahead and take fingertips down behind you. Push down and reach your chest forward. Nice deep breaths here. Mm -hmm. Then you might want to stay here or you may want to come forward. You can see I'm working to keep my knees from dropping in. I have to open these hips to do that. I might want to rest like this, or you could rest like this. I also like to rest my forehead sometimes. This is so good if I've been really stressed or anxious. See if you can come down deeper, noticing how I'm reaching my torso. Some of you can come deeper. It's just starting to release for me. And yet many of you can come very deep. But remember, if you come very deep, and I'm not able to, this is about my limit today. If you can come very deep, don't let your deep core just drop. Keep it lifting in, breathing. And then let's come out 
slowly, fingers back again, lift up through that chest. And to come out of this pose, we come out slow because the effects of that much opening, we don't want to go too fast. And breathe. So we're going to bring ourselves down to the mats, tucking that chin, coming all the way down, hugging in those knees, rocking side to side. And we're going to end with a knee down twist. So we're going to cross the right knee tightly over the left, arms out shoulder height, lift your butt a tiny bit, take it to the right and drop it down. Then drop both knees to the left so you're on the edges of your feet and turn your head to the right. Try to relax your right shoulder down and then bring your awareness to your deep belly muscles and breathe into them. Coming back up, readjusting, bicycling. And we'll go to the other side. So let's cross over tightly, left over right. Your butt goes to the left. Your knees come down to the right. Head to the left. Try to really spread the shoulder blades out on the mat. Let your head just hang heavy. It's the counterbalance here. And then find your navel center and breathe into it. And come back to center. Bicycle arms and legs. And prepare for Shavasana. Final relaxation. Now with the practice like we just did, you might have some low back tightness because the back is going, what's going on? Things are changing. If that's the case, you could bend your knees and just put your feet flat and wide or put a rolled blanket under your knees. Take up some space on the mat. Let your jaw relax. Soften the skin of your forehead. Allow your muscles to just soften now around those strong and healthy bones. Stay here as long as you need to in what is said to be the most advanced of all the asana, all the yoga poses. And otherwise, for this video, we'll bring our knees in. We'll rock a little. Roll to the right. And on an exhale, come up to sitting. We're going to take two fingers of each hand down to the mat, down to the earth, grounding Bu, B-H-U, Bu, the seed essence of earth. And just notice how that breath has deepened. And taking palms together. A silent om. Namaste.